at first, but they found me. Um, but I just want to give you a little bit of my background. Again, like I said, grew up in San Augustine, Florida, played football with Coach Cox. And, uh, you know, growing up, I, I sat in the same seats that you all are sitting in right now. And I hope today that this message uh, touches your heart, that it opens your eyes, and that it motivates you to become the best person that you can be. Um, so coming in from high school, uh, you know, I was one of the uh, top rated running backs in the state of North Florida. Um, I knew I had a bright future uh, ahead of me. And so, um, you know, I received my scholarships, which I, I'm very thankful for. And as I began to move on into my, into my college career, I went into the University of New Hampshire. And as Coach Cox said, uh, I broke a lot of records. Um, you know, I, I was voted uh, the team captain. I was the first two team, uh, first two time team captain in this in University of New Hampshire's history. Um, I am considered the strongest athlete pound for pound in universities in the university's history. Um, and so, those are just some accomplishments that I have made along the way, just to show y'all that you know, if you work hard where you're at right now, you can have a lot of success. And so with having all of that success, uh, I encountered a lot of uh, adversity in life. And moving through, you know, I went, into my soft, I went into my junior year of playing football. So I've had these dreams of going to the NFL. Growing up in high school, I've always thought about I want to make it to the NFL. That's the only way I'm going to be successful. I got to make a lot of money to take care of my mom and to, to buy these nice houses and to have the things that I didn't have as a as a youth as a child right and so when i got to my junior year i was making a name for myself i had people walking around with my jersey on i had people making signs that say go trayvon i had people over the intercom yelling my name right so i was this big time player and i was standing on top of a pedal stool life everything was going good school was going well and then it got to a point in my life where i was like here comes my senior season. This is my chance. This is my moment. This is my time to do the best that I can in order to make it to the NFL, to show these NFL scouts my talent, to show them that I belong in the NFL. As soon as I reached that moment, that point, going into my senior year, we're in spring football practice. As we're in spring football practice, it's the Friday right before Easter, the last Friday of the week before we get to go home to have a dinner with our family and then come back to start the season. In that practice, the night before, the night before that practice, I was talking to my roommates. I told my roommates, I say, guys, we gotta stay healthy. We got five more practices of, of spring ball. We gotta stay healthy. All we gotta do is continue to practice hard, practice hard and we're gonna make it through. And then we get a break, we get to go home, and then we come back and train as a team over the summer. Literally the next morning, I woke up at 5 a.m. We get ready for practice. I go out to the field. While we're on the field, we begin to practice. We're scrimmaging against each other. I get the handoff from the quarterback. I take the ball. As I collide with the linebacker, I start to fall sideways. As I fall sideways, my leg gets stuck into the ground, and I get hit from the other end of the safety. And next thing you know, all you hear is a loud noise. <laughs> my knee snaps. My body erupts in, in flames. I can feel nothing but pain. And I knew at that moment that my entire life was gonna change. I knew at that moment that something was not right. If I were to ask my friend, he would tell you that the sound that came from my voice was the sound that he has never ever heard come out of a human being before, which means it was scary. And so that's just to give you a picture and an idea of the, of the pain that went through my body when I hit the ground. So as I hit the ground, I'm rolling, I'm rolling side to side, I'm yelling, I'm holding my knee, and I can't see my vision's blurry, but as I begin to roll over to my right side, like a panoramic view, I see my teammates, I see my coaches, everybody staring at me in silence. I look at my head coach. He closes his eyes, he takes a deep breath, he looks down to the ground, and he takes the whistle, he blows the whistle, he says, move the ball up 10 yards. And literally seconds after they move the ball up 10 yards, they continue to practice. I hear the thuds of the helmets, I hear the whistle. They continue to go on. So at that time, I realized that my life has now changed. My dreams to make it to the NFL has changed. I was very motivated to make it through the season, but at this moment, I lost all motivation. I lost all dedication. I thought everything that I had worked for had ended at that moment. Everything that I had dreamed to accomplish had ended at that moment. 
but this is where grip sets in. This is where that word grip sets in. This is where I had to make the decision in my life if I was going to continue to be great like I wanted to be before. And this is the, the point in my life where I had to make the decision to get up off of that ground and to continue to move forward into the life that I wanted to create for myself. And so as I go through, I have my surgery, and they explain to me, Trayvon, you tore your ACL. Not only did you tear your ACL, but you tore your patella tendon. You also tore your, your medial and lateral meniscus. You also tore um, your MCL. This is going to be a two-year recovery process. So I'm looking to myself. I said, a two-year recovery process? How am I going to make it to the NFL? How am I going to get a chance to come back and play the game that I love, the game that I've been playing ever since I was a little boy? I only have one year left. I only have one year left to achieve my dream, to achieve my goal. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you have dreams and a lot of you have goals. A lot of people tell y'all that you have to be successful by this age and by this time. But I want you to understand that your life is going to be on a different path than everybody else. And so as I was thinking to myself saying that I won't be able to have enough time to recover, my doctor told me, he said, look, you know, your body healed up pretty quick and you only have a year's time frame in order to make it back to play for a fifth season. But at the moment, they told me that I might have just lost my senior season. So for months, I went thinking that I wasn't going to be able to get my senior season. And so when I finally got the message that the NCAA granted me a, 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 medical, a medical red shirt that I was able to come back and play a senior year, I got my motivation back. I got my dedication back. And so when I got that word every single day for PT, every single day, I went and lift weights. I went and worked on getting flexibility back into my leg. I was with my trainers every single day. I worked on my meal plan, make sure that I got my food in, everything, the nutrition that I need in order to build muscle. I wish I had a picture to show y'all the amount of muscle and the weight that I lost through this process. I had to go through two separate surgeries. Now see, being an elite athlete, when I lost the ability to walk, when I lost the ability to run, when I lost the ability to lift weights, I lost everything. And so that's just like some of you all, right? You're very smart students. So you have something that you're very gifted at doing, something that you love doing. And when someone takes that from you, when someone takes that from you, you feel like that's a piece of you gone. And so at that time when I felt like I, I had no direction in life, I had to ground myself. I had to sit down and I had to make a decision. Am I going to be great? Am I going to work hard so when that time frame is up and I'm able to play again, am I going to be ready to play? And I told myself that I was. So every single day I grinded out. I grinded out in the classroom. I made sure that I got all my classes, everything that I communicated with my professors, with my teachers. I made sure I replied back to all my emails. All of my grades were up. I did not leave error for them to tell me that I was not going to be able to be successful in any way, academically or athletically. And so with that being said, I was able to come back and play my senior year. I made a full recovery. Now I wasn't as fast and I wasn't as strong and I didn't move as smooth as I, as I did before because I had a brace that went from the mid of my thigh all the way down to my ankle. And it was very restricting, but I was able to come back and play another year. So my senior year didn't go the way that I expected it to. I went from being the starting running back, the star of the team, to a fourth quarter running back who only played in the last three minutes of a game for 15 games straight of my senior year. You can imagine how that feels. Going from being the top person in the university, when you're walking down the streets, everybody's saying your name, everybody's saying hello, professors are greeting themselves when they see you, to being a person whose name doesn't get called until the last three minutes of the fourth quarter of the game. That was my life. That was my experience. And so then I began to pray to God. And I began to ask him, what is it? Why, why did this happen to me? I know a lot of y'all, you have some things that happen to you. And then you begin to ask, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me in my life right now? Why is my family dealing with this? Why did this happen to my mother, my brother, my sister? Why is this happening? Everything happens for a reason. And I want you all to know that you're chosen. You're the chosen one in your family. You're the one that God wants to take and make a change in life. You are the future of this world. And I want you all to know that as long as you're dedicated and you're motivated to succeed, no matter what you encounter in life, is going to manifest itself. Because see, I like to say this thing, what is life without experience? 
So a lot of times we have these encounters where we say, why me? Why is this punishment me, right? And what I want you to realize is that once you change your perspective, once you change the way how you view life, that's when it's going to be a lot easier in order for you to make it through the hardships that you encounter. And this goes for adults. This goes for babies. This goes for anybody. This can apply to anyone. And so what I want you to realize is that one thing that I had trouble with is I thought it was a punishment. I thought that I did something wrong in life that I deserved to lose my chance and my, op and my opportunity to make it to the NFL when really it was a blessing in disguise. See, it was my calling to become a motivational speaker and I did not understand that because my view was to be an NFL player. But in reality, I had to have those experiences in order for me to develop the mindset, the mental strength in order to be able to step in front of large groups of people such as you to be able to, to give you a message that will motivate you, that will inspire you, that will push you to do things that you've never imagined. And so I fully accepted that gift. And so I want you to understand that when you encounter things in school, when you encounter things in life, look at it as a test, right? Look at it as a test that's only going to provide you with answers in life for the future. So you have to encounter some things. What's life without experience? Because see, a lot of times we think that things, that whatever happens to us in life, we think it's all about us, when really it's not about us. My struggle that I went through was for the purpose of this exact moment that I'm sitting here talking to y'all. The struggle that I went through was for my little sister who's watching me to show her how to be strong. The, the struggle that I went through was for me to make it through and to be successful to show my mom that she raised a strong and responsible young man. Right? So when we look at that perspective, when you look at the way how you handle and encounter certain situations, that what you do represents a lot of other people. So even in school, right, you're, you're talking back to your teacher or you're not turning in your homework, that doesn't only affect you, but it affects your parents, it affects your brothers, it affects your sisters. And we like to say we don't care what people think about us, but our name is everything. When you write your name on that piece of paper, you have a file that follows you forever. And whatever that file says, that's what they're going to look at. That's how they're going to make that judgment until they can encounter you in person. And so I just want to motivate y'all to be mindful of that, to be mindful of how you, how you interact and how you deal with certain situations in life. But understand that every situation that you deal with, it may be tough, it may be hard, it may crush your dreams, but you have the power and the ability to push through, but only if you want to push through. So now bringing it back to my experience, so... After I had my injury and I realized that the NFL was not where I was going to be, getting into the last three games of the season, we didn't have a good season. We only won six games. We didn't make it to the playoffs. We had a record of 13 years in a row of making it to the playoffs. We were the number one team in the country in 2014. So we had a name to carry on, and we didn't carry that name on my senior year as a senior captain. So it fell upon my shoulders that that streak that we had of making it to the NFL had stopped on my behalf. But see, at that time, I had my team dependent on me. I had my coaches dependent on me. While I was also trying to heal myself, heal my mentality from suffering depression, from suffering anxiety, because I wasn't the original athlete that I was before my injury. And so I had to make the decision to, to make it through and to, and to switch my perspective and to enjoy my senior season so when it was all said and done, when it was all said and done, that I could look back and say that I was successful with the way how it went. I made sure that I took every opportunity to get on the field and I made sure I took every opportunity in school. My, my head coach came to me and said, Trayvon, he said, you've been working so hard, man. He said that if you apply to grad school, I'll pay for your whole grad school. I said, thank you, coach. Now, in high school, <laughs> I never had thoughts about going, to, going to, to, to college to be successful academically. I had the thoughts of going to college to play football, right? And when I got in college, I never had the thoughts of going to receive my master's degree. That was not in my game plan. But it became a part of my game plan when that opportunity presented itself to me. And so I took the opportunity. I found, uh, I found a department that would fit me well in what I wanted to do. I got my undergrad in human development family studies because I have an interest in the development of the youth, the development of people based on their environment, how they grow. So I ended up finding um, adolescent development as a specific focus for my master's degree. 
So I went into adolescent development for my master's degree, which was a two-year program, and my coach paid for the first year of it. And so with him doing that, I made sure that I stayed on top of my studies, and I made sure that I completed everything while playing my senior season of, of football. And so completing that, I just graduated 2019 with a master's degree, coming out with a job hired by my university right away. And that's because I stayed true to my vision. So I told myself, after my injury, once I was able to walk again, once I was able to move, I was able to run, I said, God, if you give me the opportunity, if you give me the opportunity to walk again, if you give me the opportunity to be able to squat, to work out, to lift weights, if you give me the, opp the opportunity to be as athletic as I was before, I promise you that I will do whatever I can in order to give back to the community. I promise you that I, I will do whatever I can to be successful in my studies. I made that promise. And ever since I made that promise, every opportunity that has felt that has fallen in my lap, I have taken full advantage of it. So I want to encourage y'all to take every opportunity. There are some things that you don't realize that you can do in life. There are some things that you don't see yourself doing in life. Because see, a lot of times people tell us the only way that we can be successful is if we become a politician or as if we become a, a, a business major or if we become um, a, a professional singer or professional dancer or professional athlete. They tell us those are the only ways that we can be successful. But there are a lot of you that want to become teachers. There are a lot of you that want to be zookeepers. There are a lot of you that want to be uh, artists. There are a lot of you that want to be um, uh, uh, you know, a music teacher or a lot of you that want to own your own daycare. There are a lot of you that have different interests in life but see, the world tells us that the only way you can be successful is if you're in those high positions. But I want to let you know that your life is what you make it. So if you want to be a beekeeper and you want to sell honey, make sure that you're going to be the best beekeeper in the United States of America. And to be the best beekeeper, that means you're going to have all the facts. You're going to have all the knowledge about bees. You're going to know when bees sleep. You're going to know when they create the honey. You're going to know how to find the honeybee. You're going to know everything there is about being a honeybee keeper. Because that's your dream, and that's where you find happiness. And so I want y'all to don't change your, your view of life because somebody else told you you're not going to be successful in that. You're only going to be successful as much and as bad as you want to be successful. And so having that mindset, that's why I made it to where I am today. And so you can see on my shirt, it says, Talking with Trey. You can see on the wall behind me, it says, Talking with Trey. And so the way that this came from is, as I was dealing with my recovery, I was experiencing a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, and I had no one to talk to. My friends, my teammates, they can only hear so much, but I had a lot of late nights where I stayed up and I was crying because I had a lot of bad thoughts in my mind telling me, Trey, you're not going to make it. Trey, you're not good enough. Trey, you will never be successful. And one thing that I realized was that I needed someone to talk to. So I would sit inside my car late night I had to be to class the next morning at eight, or I had to be to work the next morning at eight. I would sit in my car until 1 a.m. crying, talking to myself, having conversations with myself because I felt like I couldn't put this burden on no one else. And so I began to have conversations. And then one day it clicked in my head that, yo, Trey, you're having conversations that is valuable to the world, the youth, the adults. Other people need to hear this because you're not the only one going through this situation. I'm pretty sure there are many of you on this call right now that have spent nights in your room crying alone and you felt like you had no one to talk to. You felt like there was no one there to support you. But see, I want you to realize in your life that sometimes we have to have those alone moments in order to discover a part of us that will be the healing aid that someone else needs in life when they're experiencing the same thing, when they're in their room crying at night and they don't have anyone to talk to. They don't want to explain because they feel like somebody's going to judge them. Because see, me being a man, I felt like if I expressed my feelings, if I expressed my thoughts to someone, that they would judge me and tell me that I was soft for crying. But in reality, being able to cry in front of someone, being able to show emotion was a gift. It was a strength. Because it shows that you as a human being, you have sympathy. You understand how to process your thoughts and your feelings. And you understand that at a certain point in time, you're going to make it through it. You're going to become stronger. We all have things that we deal with. And so with that being said, going back to how Talking With Trey was created, I began to post my videos. I was brave enough to take my camera and to record the conversations that I was having with myself. It sounds crazy, right? So you basically said, Trey, you've been taught, you were talking to yourself? 
right? A lot of people find it crazy when people are talking to themselves. I'm like, yo, he's over there talking to himself, right? But I found that talking to myself inside my car, recording it, a lot of people found value in it. As I posted it, a lot of people commented and said, wow, Trey, thank you so much, man. That really helped me out. And I'm sitting to myself, I'm like, how does that help somebody out? And I'm just sitting here, like, I'm just talking about my experience of what I went through. Because see, what you fail to realize is that what you experience in life, you're not the only person. There's always somebody in a worse position than you. There's always someone who wished that they were in your position. So when I was in the position of laying on the ground and I was holding my knee and I was crying and I was telling myself that this can't be true and I had to get surgery, there was somebody who was in that same position, but they did not get the opportunity to come back and play a fifth year. That was it for them. There was somebody in that position that broke their leg and was not able to use their leg. They had nerve damage, right? There's plenty of people who wish that they tore their ACL, their MCL, they're both medial and lateral meniscus and the patella tendon and wish that they had the opportunity to come back and do what I was able to do. So I want you to realize that even when you're in your worst spot, that there is somebody in a position that wish that they were in your position and not in theirs. So with that being said, that doesn't mean to downplay your, your, your problems or what you encounter in life, but that's to realize that you are at a point to where somebody is depending on you to move up so they can take your spot and we can just keep climbing up the peak, climbing up the ladder, right? You have a lot of people depending on you in life to make it through because you have younger brothers watching you. You have older, you have younger sisters, you have siblings, you have cousins, you have people looking up to you to make it through, to be successful, to show them that there is hope in this world. You're the ones that have to do it. And so in my position of finding out that you know, it was okay for me to cry. And as I created Talking With Trey, I began to move my platform to a bigger platform. And as you can see, I'll turn around and I'll show you my quote on my back. It says, I embrace me and that's why I'm free. Again, it says, I embrace me and that's why I'm free. So if you have a pen and a piece of paper next to you, I want you to write that down. I embrace me and that's why I'm free. If you don't have a pen and a piece of paper, just think about it. I embrace me and that's why I'm free. What does that mean to you? Well, what does that mean to me, Trey? So what that means to me, the reason why I developed this quote was because at that point of spending time in the car crying because I was depressed and not wanting to put the burden on my friends, I had to fully express myself to other people in order to show my vulnerability and to accept the fact that people were going to judge me. People were going to look at me different because I'm not that athlete that I was when I was in my junior, my sophomore year. I had to accept everything about me and when I accepted the fact that the NFL was not the course for me, and I realized that God wanted, intended for me to become a motivational speaker, to become a personal trainer, I had to embrace every bit of that about me in order for me to be successful mentally to move on to the next level. Because a lot of times we get stuck. We think that one thing is destined for our life, and when we don't reach it, we are lost. We give up. And so I want to encourage you to embrace yourself. Embrace everything about you. Embrace everything about you. People are going to label you. People are going to tell you as a young kid that you have to be a certain way in order to be accepted in this society. But you are different. There's a reason why every single one of us have a thumbprint that's different because we were all made uniquely. We were all made different. We all have a purpose in this world. So if you're someone who truly loves math, you truly love math, or you truly love to play video games, or you truly love something about science, be that, accept it, embrace it. You don't have to be the high school jock. You don't have to be the, the one who wins the superlative of prettiest eyes. You don't have to be the one who's the best athlete in the school. You don't have to be that person because what's made in your DNA, what's made about you is what makes you who you are and you won't be successful. You won't reach the levels that you want to reach in life until you embrace every single thing about you. And that's from your skin color. That's from the way you talk. That's from the way you walk. That's from the length of your hair. It doesn't matter what it is. You have to embrace every single thing about you. And I didn't learn that until I was an adult. I didn't learn that until I was 24 years old, which I'm currently 24 year, years old right now. So being your age and hearing this, I want y'all to learn that I embrace me and that's why I'm free. You're free because you embrace yourself. If I knew that at a younger age, 
my life would have been so much better mentally, especially with the problems that I dealt with with my family. And so now that I have this platform of talking with Trey, I continue to make it my duty in order to do research in the world of how people are adapting to the times that change, to be able to develop a, a motivational speech in order to give to the people, in order to encourage them, to push themselves past limits. Because at that time when I tore my ACL, when I had that traumatic knee injury, I thought everything was over, but it was not. I thought that my path was to make it to the NFL, as I have said plenty of times before. And a lot of people told me, well, maybe Trey, you was traveling the wrong path. But no, I was traveling the right path. There was just a left turn that I had to take in order to merge onto the highway that's going to take me a lot further and a lot quicker to the place of success of where I want to be. And so I would like to go ahead and, and tell you a story about the young boy who never quit the young boy who never gave up. And this is a true story. This is one of my mentees who I trained. And the young boy who never quit, we were working out. We had push-ups. We had squats. We had drills on the cones. We're running sprints. He's tired. Sweat dripping from his face. Can't feel his legs. At the end of the workout session, we had to fit, finish 110-yard sprints. For those of you who are not familiar with what 110 yard sprints are, that's the length of a football field from the back of the end zone through the front of the end zone. We had to run 110 yard sprints and we had five of them to end the day of training. So Brady worked so hard. Brady worked so hard at the beginning of training. Through every workout, he gave it his all. By the time we got to the end of the workout, he was exhausted. We started our sprints. We did sprint one. He took a deep breath. We did sprint two. He began to put his hands on his knees during the break. Once we got to sprint three, I noticed that he was losing gas, which means he wasn't able to run full speed the entire time. As we got to sprint four, we had two more sprints to complete. Brady begins to tell me, he says, Trey, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I can do it. As I look at Brady, he's looking left, he's looking right. He looks to the ground, he put his hands up to the sky, sweat dripping down his, down his chin. He's breathing hard. I can tell he's in deep thought. I told Brady, I said, Brady, I said, are you hurting? Do you feel pain? He says, no, I, I, I just, my, my legs feel numb. I kind of hurt a little bit, but no, I, I don't know. I just, I feel weird. I feel like I'm going to throw up. So I said, Brady, I want you to tell me this right now. Are you going to be able to finish? He said, ah, I don't know. So I didn't say anything for a while. I let him think, I let him ponder. Before I noticed, eight minutes had passed on the clock. We usually only have 15 to 30 seconds for a break. We're now going on to eight minutes of a break. Brady's still sweating. He's panting. I said, Brady, it's been eight minutes. I need you to make a decision. I said, I gave him an option. I gave him an option. I said, Brady, you've been working so hard this entire workout. So if you want to stop right here, I'm totally fine with it because you've given me all that you could from the beginning up until this point. You've given me everything that you could. So if you want to stop right now and not complete this workout, I'm totally fine with it. But if you want to finish, we're going to go 100%. Brady took a deep breath. And again, he looked down to the floor. He looked to the left. He looked to the right. He put his head up to the sky, sweat dropping down his chin, and he puts his hands back onto his knees. He says, uh, I don't know, Trey. I said, Brady. This is a governor that you have on your brain. So to, to, to give you a background on what a governor is, so like a scooter, right? You're riding down the road, beep, beep, right? So on the speedometer, that scooter says that it can go 80 miles per hour. But within that engine, there's a governor that stops the scooter at 30 miles per hour. So even though on that speedometer it says 80 miles per hour, you can only reach up to 30 miles per hour. In order to go faster than that, you have to take that governor off. And so I explained to Brady, I said, Brady, that is a mental governor that you have on. When you get to a point in life where your body feels like it's being stressed then further than what it can normally operate, it begins to tell you, no, don't do it. Don't go further. Don't take another step because you're going to require the body to use more energy than what we can use to operate at a function to where we don't have to put extra work in. That was the governor. I told him that he had going on in his brain. I said, Brady, you can choose to remove that governor and trust in yourself that you can push yourself an extra step 
or you can allow that governor to stay on and we can stop this workout. Another two minutes had passed and Brady said, well, can we take it up to the 50 yard line? I couldn't do nothing but clap my hands. And the reason why I clapped my hands was because instead of quitting and instead of not finishing the entire workout, Brady found another way to finish the workout. Even though it wasn't 110 yards, he suggested, can we start at the 50 yard line to make it just a little bit shorter, to chop it down in order to make it to where he can handle, but to finish the workout. Because finish is the most important thing. And so the reason why I wanted to explain that story to you, because you can apply that to all aspects of your life as an adult, as a child, it does not matter. As a teenager, it does not matter. We will encounter hardships in life where you're going to have an option to quit or to keep going. And you have to ask yourself, am I dying right now? Am I hurting? If I took this extra step, will I fail? Will my body give out on me? Will I not succeed? Will I succeed? You have to ask yourself, what are you willing to risk in order to finish? In order to finish, life will give you an option.